Well, hello. This is such a lovely place to be right now. I'm so thankful. Uh, so thank you so much for being here to hold this space. I'm so thankful for all these sounds and collaborations today. Uh, let's start with this tune about one of my favorite characters. The song is called Robin Hood. Uh, and I admire this character so much because he uses the power that he has, the privilege he has, uh, to help the vulnerable. So this one's for you, Robin Hood, and to all the Robin Hoods I know. Footsteps are heard on the ground. It's dark. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, Will, would you mind uh, turning off the snare on the kit behind me? Awesome, thank you. Got some bonus, bonus snare sounds. Uh, I have been spending more time at home lately, and I'm from here, from Winnipeg, uh, and these flat, flat lands have really meant 
a lot to me throughout my life. Uh, and I, you know, I spent a lot of time here before really seeing other landscapes, and it wasn't until my early 20s uh, when I ventured uh, to BC for the first time. And I was on a road trip uh, to visit my cousins in Vancouver, and we pulled up in the driveway, uh, and it was just like not a prairie driveway. And so when I got out of the car and my foot touched the ground, the ground was like in a new place. And my foot just could not make sense of it. So I fell over uh, in a not very graceful entrance into that landscape. Uh, but I feel like it, that landscape really embraced me. And I grew so quickly to love that brave mountainous land, that land that reaches into the realm of the sky. Oh, yeah. Uh, and both those landscapes, the mountains and the prairies, have taught me so much. And uh, this song is about both of those places, and it's also a love story between two people, uh, a mountain person and a prairie person. And on purpose, I wrote this song, uh, leaving the gender of those people open-ended. And I did that so that anyone could imagine themselves in that story. And this is called Aurora in the Meadow, Aurora like the Northern Lights. I learned to grow Where the winds are wild And the land is warm Where the rivers cut the earth Turn the soil to mud and clay I learned to grow And I learned to walk Stepping one foot, then the other On the flatlands of my home I learned to walk And I learned to look To the earth, the sky, the space Onward to the mountains, the mountains high, where the land is brave and rough and lives in the sky, where the one I love with their heart resides. Oh, onward to the mountains, and we raised our children. 
Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, I would like to do a kind shout out to all of the MCO players. This is so beautiful, thank you so much. Uh, what a dream this is, to play this music with these fine players right here in this place. Uh, and there's a lovely creative process that led me here. Uh, so I work most often uh, with a string trio mates, Nat Felicitas and Quentin Bart. Uh, who play the cello and the bass. And uh, we work as a string trio a lot. So uh, the basis of the arrangements for these songs uh, are from the core trio arrangements that we have worked out together. Uh, so what we're hearing here is that extrapolated um, ideas of more layers and more strings, and there's always room in my life for more strings. Uh, and I have big thanks uh, to offer to my friends Kenley Christofferson and Chris Byman, who did that extrapolating work in the arrangement uh, for the orchestra. Oh, st strings anytime, I'll take it. Uh, this song is about uh, the creative process in its own way, and it's seeing it from the perspective of pieces of art that have yet to be made. Uh, so I'm imagining uh, just on the other side of the ether, or however that works, these little arts just wondering uh, what's going to happen Earthside, you know, who will be my maker Earthside. And this one is called Over the Mountain, imagining those arts coming through to us.
to me this silt and clay you see Thank you. Uh, it's time for the fiddle to come out. I am just going to double check that this is in tune. It's important that we all agree. Uh, plus, Studies show people really prefer this thing in tune. I've been playing this instrument most of my life, and it's just one of just the most precious, precious things to me. Uh, and I discovered this instrument uh, the way we discover, you know, a lot of the really important stuff of life, and that was on an episode of Sesame Street. Uh, I was three years old, and Snuffleupagus, uh, it turns out, uh, is personal friends with Yo-Yo Ma, and he'd invited him uh, onto the block. And I, that was my first introduction, was seeing Yo-Yo Ma's string quartet uh, on that set of Sesame Street. And the earth stood still for me. Uh, and I had this profound experience of recognizing myself. Like, oh, okay, I am going to do that. Okay, I feel it. I know it. This is important. Uh, and I am forever thankful to my parents who listened to their, like, three-year-old's spiritual Sesame Street experience. Uh, and let that guide so much of my life. Uh, because here I am now. And this song is written for the fiddle and the voice. And it's about moving forward and through uh, at times where there is no going back. And this is called Starlight.
Thank you. Thank you. Ah, oh, this is the best. I'm so happy this is possible. <laughs> this song requires a D string, so I'm just going to make that happen. Uh, this will be my final song, and then I'm thrilled to uh, welcome the band Slow Spirit, which is one of my favorite, favorite bands. Uh, and I'm just feeling so thankful and honored uh, that this is possible. I am so thankful uh, that we are here, that we are taking good care of ourselves and spacing and all of that important stuff. Um, so thank you so much for being here. Thank you to the players of the MCO, to Larry, to all the behind the scenes work uh, of administration with the MCO and with Cluster. Uh, I'm so thankful to the fantastic tech crews that are just making so much happen and keeping track of so much. Uh, to the WAG, wow, there's so much to be thankful for. So what if we do like a little thank you applause? This song is about being alive, which I recommend. It's a great time. Uh, and I wrote this song uh, in the Kootenai Mountains. It's called the Creek Cabin Song, named after the place where I wrote it. Uh, and I'm speaking to my experience um, of being alive on the earth, uh, which is like to be an earthbound being and a spiritual being at once. And I just think, this is really cool. Uh, so this is a song really of gratitude to life, a self-celebration of life. Uh, and there's a section of the song that comes back that says like ooh a lot, a chorus of oohs. And I'm wondering if we could do like a sway along ooh section. Eh? A jubilant arms. <laughs> uh, so what if we just test run the uh, sway along? 
times where we can't sing together, arms find a way. So this is the ooh section, and uh, so, you know, just choose an arm sway that feels right to you. It'll go like this. Natalie's got some very expressive arm swaying. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, so much variety. Okay, I love it. Uh, you're welcome just to arm sway at all of the ooze uh, to just celebrate how cool life is. I feel great about it. Uh, I am ready, Larry, thank you. Thank you so much.
at the Winnipeg Art Gallery with the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra and Cluster Festival presenting some of our original music that has been arranged for the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra. I'm Natalie. And I'm Eric. And we form the band Slow Spirit. Most of the songs that we'll be performing today are from our brand new album, which is called Nowhere No One Knows Where to Find You, which we wrote in Ananola, Manitoba in the winter of 2019. There are some measures put in place. There will be distancing between the audience and we'll be uh, mostly focusing on the recording of this music so that we can release it online so that people can enjoy it at home. It's a very large room with a very small crowd and it's a beautiful acoustic space, and we have a, a film crew set up so that we can share it, the concert, more broadly. Yeah, the album is very densely arranged. That was something that we we made a point of making this album that was different from the way that we had written and arranged music in the past. In the past we were focused on you know, arranging for the five people that were in the band originally and then we kind of pared things down to three, really focusing on a tight kind of trio um, guitar oriented sound. But with this album we wanted to explore pianos, synthesizers, using Natalie's upright bass to create orchestral type textures, um, and even some saxophone on one song, and lots of guitars, of course, and drums, percussion. So to make that transition into this space with, with the orchestra, I really went about just finding my favorite parts, the parts that I we wouldn't normally be able to recreate live because we are only a three-piece or sometimes a four-piece band. So taking those extra parts from the album and, and finding out which voice within the orchestra would be best to represent those parts, whether it's an, an orchestral type texture or whether it's a synthesizer or even a few piano parts that made their way into the arrangements. Yeah, well, you have to learn to uh, listen to both uh, entities, I guess, right? Um, I, was lear I learned uh, just early on that uh, I need to listen to the rhythm section of the other, of the, you know, I need to take, I can't be sort of, you know, when you're by yourself conducting North Shore, you, you're, you're it, you're setting the pace, but then now I'm working with the rhythm section, so it's also setting the pace, so setting, you know, I gotta listen to what they're doing, I just can't, uh, I was, you know, following, you know, I'm used to following soloists, like, you no, know, they have singers. So I've, I worked with singers or solo instrumentalists before, but then there's that added component of a rhythm section, which you know, also need to take into account. So, um, yeah, really, really, at some points, you just have to let the band take the lead, you know, <laughs> right? Especially when it's more strenuous song, like, uh, like, you know, nowhere, no one knows. I mean, it, it's getting really, you know, uh, exciting near the end of it, and uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, the percussion is really taking over there. So you got to sort of like, okay, here at the very beginning you set the pace because it's really just the strings that start it, and then later on you sort of just let the the rhythm section kind of take over, right? And you're just sort of guiding everything, <laughs> right? You're just sort of trying to set the emotion or the yeah, just trying to keep the pace going, but uh, yeah. You're sort of like the conduit between the right the rhythm section and the band and then the orchestra. So you're like the go-between. So you just gotta keep it all. You have to be open, and when you're working in this situation, you have to be ready for anything. You have to be. Can be, okay, this is not like you're going doing a Mozart symphony, you've studied it, you know everywhere every entrance is, you know exactly what every instrument is, you know, you know what's, go what's going on. But here, you have to be really open to anything, you know, and you can't be like, no, I want to have, uh, you know, they come up to you and they say, I want to 
put this audio of steps. Like, no, we can't have it. It's like, no, let's, let's go with it. That, that's great. You know, let's hear the saxophone solo. Oh, great, saxophone solo. Just, just go with it, you know. Uh, um, so you have to be more flexible, really flexible. Just, yeah, so don't, don't come in expecting anything when you're working with a band, um, especially when you, you know, maybe if I met with them so, a week previous or something and I kind of have an idea, but when you see, just rehearse this morning, so you just have to be flexible to anything. Okay, yeah. dreams truly this has been a long anticipated show hey I've known about this show for a long time uh, and then we had our first uh, plans that were waylaid by the pandemic as you know uh, so many rip ripples were felt then uh, and so to have this show resurface like just like have the buoyancy uh, to show up again and to be performed was lovely I didn't think it would happen so uh, I work very closely with my trio mates here in Winnipeg. Their names are Nat Felicitas, who plays the cello, and Quinton Bart, who plays the bass. Uh, and they have been uh, collaborators uh, of mine for years now. And we know each other well, and we know each other musically very well. And it is uh, just like a delight to collaborate with them and to just feel like a multi-geared machine uh, that just fits together so well. Uh, so typically how we work is that I will write a song and have like the sections and the form and the harmony uh, sorted. And then we will work on together in real time, uh, complementary string parts that fit together. So usually that means like me playing guitar and singing or me playing violin and singing, and then the cello and the bass contributing. Uh, and it's a process that I think leads us to a product that is just greater than the sum of our parts. And I mean, everyone is bringing excellent parts. Uh, they are just such talented, intuitive and brave musicians. When we combine that all together, really cool things I've happen, things that I'm so proud of uh, happen. And so we had all that all ready to share with the arrangers for the arrangement process. Uh, and since there was a lot of overlap of instrumentation, right, we're already playing with like violin, viola, and viola, and five string fiddle, uh, and cello and bass. So a lot of that just translates very naturally to the larger ensemble. Uh, and then uh, there are moments uh, where I think it's very natural to extrapolate or to add more layers. Uh, and more intricacy. And those are things that sometimes I think we wish we could do as a trio. So we do a lot of uh, double stopping or like tremolo things, things that allow us to bolster our sound from our instruments. So this is, I think, like the wider palette that we reach for uh, but can't quite grasp. My then my love for Abbey, you would do. So I think uh, it's a good thing for orchestras to, to uh, I mean, I think every orchestra has been doing that for, for a number of years now, and it's a practice that should continue to. Uh, I think it's good for also just musicians in the orchestra to be working with a, a different genre, different, a different approach to music, right? We're so, we're so focused on our classical studies and everything, you know, classical training, uh, working from the page, from the score, and then to work with this, which is more, you know, uh, uh, more spontaneous, I guess. Um, so uh, it's good to, to have that, uh, yeah, good to have that combination. And orchestra should continue to do that. I'm definitely for uh, these collaborations and more in the future. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, it feels amazing. It's really a dream come true, you know, to have such a huge team of musicians behind you. And we're all working for the same thing and we're all just human beings just trying to make, do our best performance possible, mm -hmm. given these circumstances. Yeah, it's just, I feel really supported, of course. Yeah, it feels great. And the MCCO is such a lovely small group of like, you know, seasoned, there's some flexibility, there's some, you know, a little bit of a collaborative, whereas I feel like if it was a bigger group, it would just be like this like solid mass of, you know, but I can really, it feels like human beings, like a team, you know, behind me, mm -hmm. which is nice, really great. I am such a fan of the chamber orchestra, you know this. You've seen me at a million chamber orchestra shows. Uh, and this is an ensemble uh, that I love so much because they are such intuitive, uh, solid players. And uh, it's all strings all the time, which is, you know, that's where my heart lives. So I love it. And I love the variety of works that this orchestra performs, the caliber of musicality, the accessibility of it, uh, in that I feel like it's a very inviting uh, show that you guys put on. Uh, and I just like, I come and take notes. I'm like, oh, this was great. Notice that, overlapping figures, such and such. So I'm taking musical notes, I'm taking production notes. Um, I think you all just do such a fine, fine job. So I am over the moon uh, to be folded in. It's great. Oh, uh, no, I mean, uh, it's, you know, this is my, uh, my uh, first time, my, I want to say debut, working with the Chamber Orchestra. So um, everyone has been, just very easy to work with, very uh, cordial. So it's, it's been a great uh, time and uh, I'm very uh, fortunate, appreciate considering the circumstances. Bravo to the uh, MCO for continuing during, during a pandemic, of, you know, where, it's, where you never know what's gonna happen. I mean, this concert could have, been, could have not happened <laughs> considering that what's happening right now. So um, I feel very fortunate and uh, I think it's good for every, uh, organization and, and just artists in general to soldier through and just let's just try our best to keep it going and yeah, keep it yeah in a safe way yeah, it's we show that we that it's possible to do it in a safe way um so yeah just uh just just continue on and and provide you know live music and for, for people out there huh. yeah well thank you so much for the opportunity uh, it's it's really a dream come true i would think the risking sounding a little sappy. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't something that we ever thought we would be doing. We, both, Natalie and I both went to music school. Natalie's played in an orchestra before. And then since then, felt a little like we abandoned that world entirely. And it's nice to kind of be reunited with that, that kind of orchestral sound and that, that tradition that it's still strong and alive in Winnipeg, and it's great to be trying to make something happen between these two worlds. Um. Oh yeah, just thank you. Thank you to the MCO and uh, to Cluster Festival for putting this to on and together. Hello, hello. One minute.
Thank you guys so much for being here. It's so nice. I just want to say that. Oh, that's good. This is a wintry kind of song.
chamber orchestra back in for one more song. Thanks so much again for listening. Thanks so much to Will and Art, to Cluster Festival, Ashley Al. Thanks to B&B Studios for catching this on video. Yeah, thanks everyone. It's been a great day. <laughs> See you.